We have breaking news in the bike industry today because BMW just released the new R18 Transcontinental and the R18B. These are cruiser luxury touring versions of the R18. Of course, there has already been the R18 Classic, which is a version of the bike that has a windshield. It's got saddlebags, passenger seat, extra lights, but this new R18B and R18 Transcontinental have some extra components, like a new audio system from Marshall, like Marshall that makes a guitar amps, which is pretty cool, and really big deal, Alex is gonna love this, a new 10.25 inch TFT display that can connect to an app on your phone, much better than the uh, little round retro screen that you get on the normal R18. Yeah, there's some cool tech on this bike, we'll get to all of that in just a second, but let's start off by just giving you the differences between these two models. So we have the Transcontinental and the R18B. The B stands for bagger, and then of course the Transcontinental is the luxury touring model for if you wanna take a passenger and have a big lazy boy chair on the back of it. Uh, so let's go into the Transcontinental just to start. Uh, as far as design goes, you have a pretty big front fairing with a huge windscreen, uh, wind deflectors that are adjustable so you can get the maximum amount of airflow. Uh, and keep yourself cool. Um, so lots of wind protection, good for putting on lots of miles. Uh, you get additional headlights when compared to the standard R18. So you have those two additional accessory lights on the outside of the headlight. Like Case mentioned, awesome Marshall sound system. There's a couple different versions of it, which we'll get to in a little bit. Engine protectors, side cases. Each of the side cases are 27 liters in capacity, 26.5 liters if you option them with the sound system. The Transcon Continental also gets a top case, which is huge, a 48 liter top case, heated seat, lots of chrome trim. The engine is done in a silver metallic finish and overall just a really good looking bike and something that's going to be pretty comfortable, I would imagine, if you want to do long cross country trips. That is something that BMW does a really great job of. All of the BMWs that I've ridden are easy to hop on. Everything feels nice, sorted, refined, and... Uh, that's a good thing because the total package on this transcontinental version of the R18, which is already not a particularly lightweight bike, is 941 pounds. So it's a big beast. And for you guys out there that ride baggers, you're probably thinking, oh, you know, my my Harley this or that or whatever weighs of well over a thousand pounds or something. But still, for your average rider on normal sized motorcycles, seeing that number 941 pounds is something that's a big bike yeah that's a huge bike and the bagger it's still a big bike it's a little bit lighter weight coming in at 877 pounds you lose the top case on the bagger version the windscreen is also a little bit lower so not going to keep you in quite as big of a bubble for doing those long highway miles and then you also have the engine done in a matte black finish instead of the silver uh, that you get on the transcontinental yeah, now a little bit more about this engine. It's a 1,802cc big boxer, so it's a flat twin, and BMW actually calls it the big boxer. That's their official term for it. This engine is air and oil cooled, so pretty old school, which I like a lot, actually. I think that's awesome. Uh, 91 horsepower, 116 pound-feet of torque, six-speed transmission, and the coolest thing about this entire powertrain is that the R18 has this nickel-plated exposed drive shaft. So I don't recommend turning your head and looking that, that as you're riding, but if you were next to an R18 and you were to look at it, you would see that drive shaft spinning as a bike rides down the road. Just looks wicked cool. Yeah, and speaking of seeing that drive shaft, you're actually gonna be riding this bike very soon. So you'll be able to get some shots of that just right around the corner. Yeah, exactly. Uh, next month, a little bit after this bike is released, I'm gonna have a chance to ride it and uh, actually see what it's like, which is pretty cool. Yeah, right here in our backyard too. They're actually doing the event around the Boulder, Denver area. So super cool. All right, let's talk about brakes really quick because there's some fun stuff going on with the brakes. So up front, you have dual 300 millimeter discs, a single 300 millimeter disc in the rear, all with four piston calipers. Uh, but you do get BMW's full integral ABS system, which is pretty cool. So what that means is when you pull on the front brake lever or what would traditionally be your front handbrake or the, uh, the rear brake with the pedal, 
that's actually going to apply both brakes no matter which lever you're using. So it's gonna keep things really safe, less to think about. Uh, but what's really cool about it is that this bike comes with cruise control. So you have dynamic cruise control, which comes standard on the bike, um, but you can also get the active cruise control system, which uses radar. Uh, and something really cool is because of this ABS system, it will actually keep you at the correct speed if you're going too fast. So it'll use the engine braking, but if the engine braking is not enough to slow you down to what you have the speed set to when you're going down a hill, it will actually automatically apply the brakes for you and keep you at the correct speed. Pretty cool tech. Case will have a chance to check that out and try it out for himself. Um, but, you know, a motorcycle that can get on the brakes for you automatically, I don't even know of any cars that really do that. Most of them just use the engine braking to slow you down. Yeah, true. It's pretty interesting, and I'm hoping that the bike that I hop on will have the active cruise control, but either way, even the standard cruise control, the fact that the non-optional, just what comes from it on it from the factory can use the brakes to slow you down when you're going too fast, yeah, that's pretty high-tech stuff, even without getting the optional cruise control that has radar and everything. And there's a ton more tech on this motorcycle, of course, because it's luxurious and it's German, so it has to have a lot of tech, right? So you have four old-school round analog instruments up at the top above the 10.25 inch TFT, and uh, getting into screens is definitely Alex's territory. Yeah, I just want to say with the screens, I think it's a really cool mix of analog and digital. You have this huge widescreen display, which really satisfies me, but I know Case loves the analog displays, so it's kind of best of both worlds. Something for everybody. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a little bit of something for everybody. But anyway, uh, you can go and just have a rider screen there where it's going to show your, your basic info, like your tachometer, your speedometer. Uh, but you can also do a split screen view and display other things like radio, navigation, media, phone. Uh, this bike does have an app that goes with it connects to your phone, that's how you're gonna control uh, the navigation and set waypoints, everything like that. So lots of tech in there. The connected app can also log your rides and keep uh, track of your bike statistics. There's also a keyless uh, ride system, so you don't have a traditional key that you stick in the ignition. It's uh, more like a, a wireless transponder like you would see in modern cars. And what that means is, you know, you just walk up to the bike, get on it, you can start it. The steering lock is activated by this as well. And some of the other baggers we've tested, for example, that Indian Challenger we had at the beginning of this year, that also had a keyless system, but the fork lock, the steering lock was manual. So pretty cool that it's integrated into the wireless key system. And same with the side cases, they lock and unlock uh, as well as the top case using the wireless key. So pretty cool. Also, something I really like is a storage compartment for charging your phone, right in, integrated right into the tank. We saw this on the Sondor's Metacycle. I thought it was super cool on that bike. Uh, and I never expected to see it on kind of an old school looking cruiser or bagger, but it's here and everyone's got a smartphone these days. So big fan of that. Yeah, I like that. It's, I feel like that's better than having it sit in your pocket. You know, it's going to be more protected in there. And since you're probably going to be hooking up your phone to the bike anyways, you might as well literally have it hooked up to the bike, charging, all of that. Some more tech that you get, you also have an LED headlight, tail light, turn signals, and actually the rear lights are integrated into the side case on these new R18s. You can also get an optional adaptive light that turns when you turn. The engine still has the different ride modes, rain, roll, and rock, or rock and roll, if you wanna call it that. By the way, props to BMW for being a little bit creative with the ride modes versus some of the other manufacturers yeah. that letter them or put numbers yeah, to them. Yeah, exactly, like they're... ride mode one. Exactly. Two, yeah. What do they do? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a lot more fun. You also get a standard stability control, drag torque control. You have an anti-hop clutch. You get hill start control, which both Alex and I don't really feel like hill start control is ever necessary in a bike. You just use your foot brake. Rear brake, baby. <laughs> but anyways, it has it. Uh, you can also get an optional reverse assist, which again, on a bike that's almost a thousand pounds, would probably be pretty nice to have. It uses the starter like some other big bikes to pull the bike backwards. Again, I'm hoping the motorcycle that I test is going to have that so I can try it out because I've never owned a bagger and uh, I've never actually tried out a reverse on a motorcycle. So it could be cool. 
All right, let's talk about the sound systems because both of us got pretty excited when we learned that these were Marshall sound systems and there's a couple different versions of it. Uh, all of them come standard with you know your AM and FM radio, Bluetooth connectivity. You can get Sirius XM satellite radio as an option. Uh, the standard speaker system gives you two speakers up front. If you move up to their stage one system, that gives you two additional subwoofers up in the front uh, fairing but then you go to the stage two, which is the highest end system, that gives you a total of six speakers. So two up front with two subwoofers up front as well, and then an extra two speakers in the backrest. And that stage two uh, is only available on the transcontinental because that's the only version that has the backrest. But if you're taking a passenger along, they should be able to hear the music perfectly clear going down the road. So more changes that are on the R18. Uh, both bikes, of course, since they're designed for cruising, you get bigger fuel tank. So it moves from 4.2 gallons to 6.3 gallons. They also changed the rake of the front ends on these bikes for extra stability. Um, interestingly enough, it's also slightly shorter wheelbase. Um, and then something that I think is really cool is that the fairings on these bikes have adjustable ventilation control. So you can, I guess, move some of the airflow around a little bit which is probably pretty nice because again, this engine is air and oil cooled, so hopefully you can help curb that a little bit by changing where the air is flowing. Now there's also a special first edition that they're making for both of these bikes. That gives you extra chrome, special paint, pinstriping, different wheels, a welcome box with some extra goodies, but that's not the coolest part. What they're doing that's really cool is a set of accessories and parts called Option 719. And Option 719 decades ago was an internal code used by BMW Motorrad in Berlin. And that internal code was to specify that that bike was being built with some sort of special request or as a one-off vehicle. So they're doing a series of parts and paint schemes called the Option 719, and they look pretty cool. So tell me about that. Yeah, you can get different head covers, you can get a different seat, but by far the coolest thing that you can do with this Option 719 options is that you can get Galaxy Dust Metallic Paint. Uh, not everybody is going to dig this Galaxy Dust Metallic Paint. You would have to be pretty bold to spec that out on your bike. Uh, I don't even know if I would be that bold and I wear some pretty brightly colored pants, but I think it's really cool that they're offering it. I would give huge props to anybody who actually specs their bike that way. Yeah, I don't think I'd order one myself that way, but I would love to see one in person. It it's be awesome. kind of this paint color that changes in the light from purple to teal and all the colors in between and looks like it has a ton of metallic flake in it. So Yeah, it's the last thing I would expect from the Germans. I didn't think they had enough of a like a sense of humor or uh <laughs> I don't know flare, I guess, to uh, to do a paint color like that. But yeah, yeah. this is what you expect from the Germans, black yeah. and chrome. Exactly. So. Exactly what is behind Alex is what you expect out of a German bike. Very serious, very almost uh, surgical. But yeah, no, that, that Galaxy Dust metallic paint. Woo! <laughs> yeah, let us know down in the comments what you think of that. I'm yeah. a big fan of it, even though I wouldn't option it that way, but huge props to BMW for doing something super fun like that. Uh, as far as pricing goes, $21,495 for the bagger and $24,995 for the transcontinental. Yeah, I know, uh, man, I know baggers are expensive bikes. This isn't the only expensive bagger out there, but wow. God. That's a lot of money. <laughs> That's a lot of dough for a bagger, for sure. That's a lot of money for any motorcycle. I didn't even spend that much on my truck. Holy, holy yeah. hell. Yeah, you got a deal on your truck. Oh, geez, yeah. So there you go. If you're looking for what could potentially be the ultimate cruiser coming from overseas with how much tech features, the fit and finish that I know is on these R18s, the build quality, uh, yeah, really, really impressive stuff. It's worth a look. So very soon we're going to be getting out and riding this bike, see how it actually is in the flesh rather than just talking about it as it's released, but not really on the market yet. So be sure to stay tuned for that and any other news coming out in the bike industry. And we'll see you guys in the next video.